Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Suzerain, a new role-playing, choose-your-own-adventure type game where you're the president of a troubled country that is trying to enact some dem democratic reforms after years of authoritarianism. This is a really interesting sort of choose-your-own-adventure type game that I have been live-streaming on my Twitch channel periodically over the last few weeks, and this was taken from my live streams from my Twitch channel. Um, it is still early days in our presidency. We're in chapter two of what I think is either three or four chapters, but it's sort of the early phase of the game. Uh, we just came out of a questionable uh, party where our vice president was uh, leading a party that kind of devolved into debauchery, and we're pretty sure our vice president friend, who's been our friend since college, cheated on his wife at the party. Um, but we are just about to go into a serious political speech from our wife who we uh, put into a position of prominence in a massive local festival uh, to give a speech on women's rights. But in so doing, we may, we don't know yet, but we may have created a political enemy by removing the previous speaker kind of at last minute for uh, my own wife's, uh, I guess, message. Um, but with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right back into the stream, pick things up where we left off. We are playing as kind of a moderate Democrat centrist type figure, trying to appease a lot of people, trying to solidify our power base without being too radical and democratic, but also uh, without being sort of an old line staunch hardliner. So we'll see how that all plays out. But let's jump back into the episode. Hope you guys enjoy. Leave your thoughts down below and I'll catch you guys at the end. President Rain saves the day. According to the information we've received, President Rain has decided that he will veto the Religious Harmony Bill. <sighs> the isolationist policies of President Rain are burying us deeper into the mud. Okay. Opening of the Benny F Festival. Oh, God. This is where I'm going to piss off that politician, isn't it? My wife's going to give a speech. Don't mess this up. Don't worry, you're going to be fine. The surge opened the door. We were enveloped by the roar of the crowd. The next few minutes were a blur of handshakes, photos, and reporters. Questions. The onlookers cheered as we walked to the red carpet on the newly built art center. We followed the guards through the canvas white halls until we came to a set of arched doors leading to the auditorium. We waited outside as security did a quick sweep of the area, then headed in. So, this is it. I will finally stand on the same platform as you. A platform where Swordland's women will have their voices heard and acknowledged for the first time. Break a leg. The two of us proceeded to the podium. I spoke first, delivering a short paragraph about the importance of Banif and the festival to Swordland. I then introduced Monica. Thunderous applause echoed around the auditorium as she stepped to the microphone. I exited the stage and found my seat right next to Curtin Lesty. Ladies and gentlemen, as the First Lady of Swordland, I welcome all of you to the Benny Festival. The crowd erupted again, clapping and cheering. Curtin Lesty leaned over and hissed into my ear. Mr. President, I am afraid you have made a grave mistake. There will be consequences. Are you threatening me, Curtin? No, I am merely telling you what will happen. Your little stunt has lost you my support in the assembly. I kept my eyes on the stage when the applause subsided. Monica resumed her speech. This festival holds a very important place in all of our hearts. It is a celebration of art, music, theater. But of all of all else, it is a celebration of the people of Benif, of their free and open-minded spirit. As we all unite for the festiv festivities, we must not forget the values that have inspired them. Today marks the beginning of the Week of the Spirit, a time for vitality, growth, and new beginnings. 
The crowd was hanging on to her every word, but the mayor of Anarika and his entourage didn't seem as impressed. I stand on this podium today to speak about change, about a new beginning for our society. Swordland calls itself a free country, yet half of its citizens are still barred from enjoying the same freedoms that the other half take for granted. I refer to myself and my fellow women. A rumble went through the crowd, scattered applause mixed with murmurs of discontent. To truly move forward, we must make a break from old traditions and strive toward equality for all. Equal rights, equal pay, equal access to education. Enough! The entire hall fell silent. The mayor of Enrique sp rose and spoke. I will not let this woman besmirch the traditions upon which our great country was built. <laughs> Mr. Lesty, please sit down. <laughs> Uh, um. Curtain, get in your goddamn seat. No, Anton, I can no longer sit idly by. We are past that point. Mrs. Rain, what right do you possess, possibly have, to pass judgment on our value as sort of citizens? You are not a politician. You are not a speaker. You are merely a woman who is... L who's lucky enough to be married to the president. Your place is not at the podium, it is at home, tending to your husband and children. The crowd was growing rowdier. Some booed and jeered at Curtin's words, others whooped in approval. I? Monica froze completely. The audience grew louder. I had to do something. I walked up to the stage beside my wife at the podium. The mayor was still standing defiantly in the front row. Three. Everybody's going for three. Mr. Lesty, do I have to teach you basic manners? Have you forgotten what you learned in kindergarten? The crowd erupted in laughter. Curtin's face turned red. I will not stand idly by as our swordish values are being tested, especially by our very own president and his harlot of a wife. Is rudeness a swordish value now? Is impropriety... Oh boy, this is getting wicked. Two, two is a little more dictatorial, right? Send him to the gulag. I feel like publicly humiliating him is the better approach. I still want to see what happens if I choose one. I want to publicly humiliate this guy. I'm only doing what I feel is right to protect the country. And I feel it's right to have you thrown out. Guards! You feel it's right to berate a woman, the president's wife at that. Her ideas are dangerous, Anton. They'll lead us down a dark path. Your ideas, on the other hand, will lead us back to the Dark Ages. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. The only thing for certain is that you won't garner sympathy by making a scene. I'll show you a dark path. Your ideas, on the other hand, will lead us back to the Dark Ages. Without our traditions, we are lost. And without change, we are fossils. Now please sit down. The crowd was booing Curtin loudly now. He looked around the room and let out a deep sigh. My apologies, Mr. President. Mrs. First Lady, I crossed the line. Monica regained her composure by now. She took her place at the microphone. My heartfelt apologies to you as well, Mr. Least. I assure you my intention was not to offend anyone, especially a senior member of the Assembly, such as yourself, who has pledged his life to the betterment of this country. I hope one day we shall all be able to set aside our differences as we have done today and walk toward a happier, brighter future for all of Swordland's citizens, male and female alike, we must all remember, the future cannot exist without the past. 
and I believe we're witnessing the meeting of our glorious past and our bright future right here in Benif today. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to officially open the Benif Festival. A Morgan Vescor. Vecturn Sista, everyone in the hall, including Curtin, finished the decades old saying. The crowd erupted in cheers. Everyone, Curtin, even Curtin started clapping. People started chanting Monica's name, and the band broke into the official festival anthem. The opening event was finally finished. But I know Curtin would never forget what happened today. How the hell did that end up going well? I think it was because the crowd turned on him, to be honest, Wargiven. I don't think it went well at all. I think he's just hiding his true sentiment. He'll come and stab us in the back eventually. Give him time. So it says that refugees are fleeing from Valen to our border and special forces are being deployed over here. I'm a little worried about Va what Valen might be doing to its people. Yeah, Super Chacho, there's a lot of very powerful women in our society if women are really so oppressed in the society. It's kind of interesting. Downtime at home. Yeah, I mean, they probably came from... There's almost no doubt they came from elitist backgrounds. It felt like eternity since the Benif Festival had it really only been less than 24 hours. I was at home now drinking an afternoon coffee on my balcony. A stack of newspapers lay at my side. I picked them up one by one, reading and rereading the articles about the festival. Some of the papers came out in full support of the First Lady for her brave speech. Others took Curtin's side. Nearly all of them agreed that the First Lady had acquitted herself very well following the interruption. I was putting the last newspaper down as Monica joined me on the balcony. Can we talk for a bit? Of course. What is it? I never in a million years would have wished for this, Anton. I just wanted to thank you for supporting me and apologize for creating such a spectacle. All I wanted was to bring the people of Swordland together the way you're able to, but not like this. Her eyes were getting moist. A single tear fell onto the newsprint. If you're going to succeed in this, you have to be stronger. I know you can be. Wipe her tears away. Oh, Anton. Thank you. One more thing. You know how stubborn I am. When I gave that speech, I saw hope in the eyes of all the women in the audience. This is the right path for me, Anton. I want to officially adopt this cause as First Lady, to be able to work on reforms, attend meetings, rally, support among female politicians. I know this is something you're passionate about as well. Can I count on you? This feels like a dicey proposition, like bringing her into all my stuff. She's, she's not an elected official. Of course, my love, I'm looking forward to working closer together. With a large cookie. Deanna had written my name and icing on it. As I sipped my coffee and nibbled on the cookie, I thought that I had made the right choice. Things were going to get harder, but at least my life at home was somewhat peaceful. Until I have an affair with my secretary. Just saying. Read the report from Lachman. The Ministry of Statistics, along with the Ministry of Economy and the Central Bank, have delivered a preliminary economic status report detailing the recession has slowed down significantly and the system is likely to reach stability soon. If the current progress is maintained, Minister Hole said the signs were good. But more, uh, but more needed to be done. Okay. How's uh, the situation in the... So we've got like a bunch of this shit going. What about the economy? Okay. 
We have experienced generals, large reservist pool, happy military personnel, international security jurisdiction. What is that? Okay. Shouldn't the independence be down to nine now that the communist was killed? Just saying. <laughs> when we all get shot, at least we'll get shot together. Budget allocation of Sortus Armed Forces. To determine the current situation of the military and its spending policy, we held a meeting in the White Room. Peter, Vulcan, and Yosef were seated. General Vulcan. Mr. Lankia, let's start the briefing. Very well, Mr. President. We have prepared the briefing to convey further details about the current situation of our military. Which branch would you like to know about? What's the situation of our army? According to the latest reports, Camp Strongarm, currently we field three armies totaling approximately 400,000 active troops, which is a good amount. The real issue we're having is the quality, not the quantity. What's the current equipment status? Our army is quite outdated by today's military standards. Most of our equipment is two decades old. To make up for the lack of modern military equipment, we resort to a large number of soldiers, which is not really a long-term solution. I've been trying hard to reduce the effects of this problem. It is very problematic. We need more funding toward modernization. Otherwise, our army will be seen as weak. Where exactly is armed forces deployed right now? The first army is stationed at Lesbia, and uh, at the Lesbia and Valen borders to protect the way from the central regions of Sordland. The second army, our strongest force, has been situated on the Rumberg border. The second army has a large mountain commando force and is the best equipped army because they're facing Rumberg. The third army near Angolian border of coastal areas facing Vagland. Due to our bitter past, we generally keep our coastal defenses force, although many years ago the decimation of our fleet is still not forgotten. Rumberg fields about six armies, amounting to a million soldiers. Lesbia fields five armies, 800,000. Vagsland, one army of about 140,000. Valen fields an army of about 100,000, and Angolia fields two armies, totaling 200,000 troops. The sheer size of Rumberg's army is because of their forces of conscription law. Due to their massive gold reserves, they're able to afford it. On the other side, the Lesbian army is the most advanced, followed by the Vagslandian army. Both of these countries put a lot of money in modernizing their military. Let's talk about our Navy. Our Navy currently con constitutes 59 ships with a total of 60,000 sailors and support staff. As you know, these ships are commanded from our main naval base at Kronreit, where our flagship SN Rinin is docked. How does the Navy compare to others? Our Navy is dwarfed by the size of the Vagslandian Navy, which has 194 ships, and the Angolian Navy, which has 81 ships. We only surpass Lesbia in terms of our navy, and they have less than 30 ships. As you see, the situation is dire, but the solution is not just more ships. To make a truly better navy, we need to equip our ships with modern radar and sonar systems. More outdated ships wouldn't mean much. Uh, how are our capabilities in prior projection? The truth is we are limited to our near region due to the size and technology level of our ships. If we had more modern support vessels, we could participate in international operations. Okay. What about our Air Force? Our Air Force currently has 410 planes in the inventory, out of which only 140 are jets. Not in great condition. 30,000 pilots and support staff work in the Air Force, and they are commanded by uh, commanded from the Mark Air Force Base in Ellery. Planes can bomb targets within 400 kilometers of the airfields. They have medium range and semi-effective nighttime bombing capabilities. At any time, we can field seven air wings composing a total of 130 aircraft that can operate in combat. Uh, that can operate in combat duty. In terms of our bombing capabilities, we have an average of 100 meters precision. This is not great, but still within the effective radius of the bombs. 
Are pilots of average experience? They have a total of 450 flight hours. Okay. Let's move on. Ministry of Defense is content with the additional funds. Hopefully the allocated money helps our defense of needs. The increase of the military budget is for national security, which is threatened by Rumberg and other nations. The military is a top priority for our administration and the Swordish people who hold it in high esteem. It is a pleasure to work with you, Yosef and Valk, and you are truly sons of Swordland who have served and continue to serve well. The important thing is we put these funds to good use as the people will need proof of our success in the military. Sure, I want to hear the suggestions. The increase of the military budget leaves us with big questions about how to utilize it. There is a lot of debate at the military ministry, which resulted in two factions of thought. The first faction is in favor of enlarging the armed forces by enlisting more men, while the second faction is in favor of purchasing better military equipment instead. What's the argument for increasing size? Some of our neighbors have larger populations and thus a large armed force. Using funds to boost our size would minimize their advantage. Theoretically, numbers alone don't determine the strength balance. Enlisting more soldiers to the armed forces could also minimize the unemployment issue. What's the argument for purchasing better equipment? The armed forces are behind in terms of military equipment in comparison to our neighbors. We need a fundamental modernization program. No matter how many advanced weapons and systems we buy, our enemies cannot can overcome them. Import drones? Guys, it's 1954. Quality over quantity. So Yosef, who is apparently in league with Lyles, or at least that's what it seems like in most of our discussions, is in favor of the modernization. Valken is not. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess it's interesting. I'm confused. So Yosef agrees with me, but then they look at each other and frown? Huh? All right, I think we're going to go on foreign policy trips now. Education reform is going well. Um, let's go to Agnolia first. Swordland's one flight from Holsor to Stallport took three hours, but went w very smoothly. We were about to touch down. David left his seat and came over while Simon was enjoying his newspaper. Looks like we're about to land, Mr. President. I looked outside and could see Hedgeland, uh, the island between Vagsland and Angolia. So many conflicts over a small piece of land, the island can barely sustain itself without outside help. If I was in the shoes of the Angolian president, I wouldn't do anything to protect. I would do anything to protect the motherland. 
I don't blame him. It's a very strategic position. Certainly, if you have Hedgeland, that means you are in control of the whole Valos channel. I suspect it will be one of the topics Mr. Van Horten will bring up as a bargaining chip. We must be careful. Hedgeland must be under the control of Agnolia, but the international community is yet to recognize it. For a good reason, too. Nobody wants to make an enemy of Agsland, especially because of the support of the United Cantana and CSP. Me included, I wouldn't want to do anything to injure our relationship with Agsland. I agree. We should try to do our best to stay in the middle ground. Aside from the point of Hedgeland, we need to be careful with the additional requests. According to the deal that was negotiated so far, they want to sell us their steel for a higher price than they're requesting an easier access to our agricultural market. In return, they're promising cash flow and investment, especially in the Anglin region. Oh, Sir Squire, thank you very much for the raid five minutes ago. For some reason, I didn't get a notification. But thank you for that. After the guards made their way out, I exited the plane and waved at the crowd. Pay er, Prime Minister Van Horten was nowhere in sight. Instead, I was greeted by the foreign minister. Oh, boy, you're snubbing me already. Why is Surge with us on this trip? Yes, it was. Thank you, Serge. Got in the car and we made our way through the foreign streets. Our convoy was protected by the Swordish and Angolian guards in their vehicles. We began driving by the highway besides the port and saw dozens of dockyards and ships anchored. Some of the ships and machinery looked old. The city itself looked very gray and grim. The building had a touch of Rumberg's famous monarchian architecture with a mixture of Swordish signature domes on the older ones. We were now on the main road to the office of the Prime Minister. Looks like they're not too happy to see you, sir. Serge pointed out at the crowds gathered on both sides of the street. It was a protest. They were shouting and yelling at our convoy. Some of them held signs written in Swordish. Swordland must pay its debts to Agnolia. You know, I never knew Agnolians were so ungrateful. Not everyone sees a great leader like you every day. They can yell all they want. I know what it is. They were always scared of Swordland's potential, and now they are afraid that a lion leads Swordland. They are afraid of you. Not just that, not just that, but you're a man of you're a man selfless enough that you would pay your for your driver's children. A true leader, I dare say. How is Anton doing? He's fine, sir. A strong boy, taken after his namesake for sure. We've arrived, sir. Make Surge my VP? Yeah, if I could. Mr. President, welcome to Agnolia and the beautiful city of Stalport. Good to see you, Martin. He reached out for a handshake. The press surrounding us had been waiting for this moment. Shake hands and hug after. We shook hands and I went for a hug, which was received well by the Prime Minister. The press went wild and took more pictures. He gestured to the entrance of the 200-year-old parliamentary building. This way, please. I would like to present you with a gift as a sign of friendship between our countries. This here is one of the first treaties written in between Swordland and Agolia, just like the ones you have prepared with Mr. Vesky before my term. May it mark the renewal of our friendship today as well. I hope so, Mr. Van Horten. Gift one of the original copies of the first consul constitution of Swordland. Gift a swordish bread puppy, despite Martin's known fear of dogs. Gift an ornamental ceremonial sword made with swordish steel. Three feels like it would be offensive because they want to sell us their steel. Two is deliberately offensive. One is really the only friendly option. 
2 is the Mega Putin move. Maybe I'll do another playthrough where I'm just a dick and see how it's different. But I'm going to go with the first Constitution of Swordland. Ah, an excellent copy. I've always wondered what one of the originals looked like. Thank you for the excellent gift. Would you like a drink, Mr. Rain? I wouldn't mind some Magnolian vodka. Ah, you know your drink. He poured and gave me mine before sitting down again. Let's get straight to business. Let's. First of all, I would like to say I have been watching your recent changes to the immigration policy. We have worries about the new and tighter immigration laws. Immigrants are very important for the beneficial economic development, and we believe very much in Angolia. I would definitely prefer Sordalan to be welcoming to Angolian citizens, and vice versa. Before I start caring about Angolian citizens, I must care about my own people. A valid point, but you're not giving me much incentive to work with. So tell me, Mr. Rain, is Swordland a reliable trading partner to Angolia? As long as Angolia is a reliable trading partner, I can assure you we are. It was, very good, it was a good move to start building that highway. Overall, this will positively affect our trade. Well done, Mr. Rain. Thank you. You're very kind. So what's it going to be? I'm afraid with all of your actions so far, I'm not convinced that Swordland's the right partner for Magnolia. Swordland is simply too volatile with the recent protests. We were willing at first, however. The situation has changed. We do not have confidence in your state anymore. I'm sorry that you've come all this way for this. That's kind of insulting. Like, why did I come all this way? Can we work something out? It is difficult. But I will still offer an alternative for the sake of our history together. First, you will allow us privileged access to your agricultural market. And you will be buying steel from us from a higher price. That rights the wrongs of the past. And then there's this issue. As you know, Hegelen's long been contested between Angnolia and Vagsland. You know the international community does not recognize a rightful claim on the island, including Swordland. We can only agree to this deal if Swordland finally announces the recognition of Hegeland as Angolian territory. I would recognize the island, but I'm not sure I want to give him these preferential trade deals. Wars on the horizon. Yeah. You're asking for too much. Be careful with your words, Mr. Van Horten. You're in no position to judge me. I've made my decision. I thought this could be the start of a new era, but apparently not. Very well. I won't be joining. It's time we're on our way back home. All right. After you. The rest of our trip was full of fake smiles, handshakes, incredibly long ceremonies, and even longer meetings between our ministers and counterparts. When we came to the end of the trip, the way back was mostly silent. I couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief when we touched on Whole Sword. Yeah, I mean, combined, our two fleets were way smaller 
than than Vagsland. I can't let all of our goods get strangled off here. Super Chacho, I didn't snub him. Oh, I should have snubbed him. Eh. Ended up in the same same place. All right, let's go ahead and check out the uh, trade talk with Valen. Hopefully this one goes better. Swordland's flight from whole sword to vex, blah, 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 blah. Took hours. Took five hours. Despite heavy turbulence, I managed to sleep a little. Along with Simon and Divik, we landed in the international airport of the city of Valen. Our aim was to finalize the trade deal drafted between Swordland and Valen. Shortly after our plane landed, the door opened and the sun blinded me for a moment. I stepped outside. I saw the soldiers lined up on either side of the red carpet. There must have been at least a hundred soldiers. The marching band started playing and the soldiers immediately saluted me. Salute the soldiers. So this is obviously a dictatorship here. At the bottom of the stairs, Vistor Smolok was waiting for me next to a military jeep with a few soldiers by his side. There were a few reporters on, side, or on the side waiting with their cameras. He was a tall man, almost as tall as me. He was wearing large sunglasses. His attire was a regular suit, contrasting with the military attire of everybody else in the field. Mr. President, welcome to Varklavitz. He immediately motioned for an embrace. We hugged and many cameras went off at the same time. He turned around for a couple of additional poses. Nice to see you, Mr. President. Now that the pleasantries are done, let's go. We'll take the jeep for a tour. With another tune for the marching band, we boarded the military jeep. He sat in the driver's seat, and I sat next to him. As we started speeding up, the soldiers saluted again. Mr. Smolik saluted back. Salute the soldiers. My security detail and Victor's security detail started following us immediately along with a team of reporters. We'll first go to the city center to see the opening of a salute statue. Sounds exciting. This is an important occasion for Valen. I'm sure you will like it. I'm sure the statue was for him. Is Verklavitz always this empty? I had the locals close down their businesses because of your visit so that you can enjoy the city more. There we are. Dictator alert, dictator alert. There is no doubt that Victor Smolak is a dictator. A man came closer to the fences and started yelling at Victor. With my limited knowledge of the Vesic language, I understood the words Victor and murder. Almost instantly, two soldiers showed up from behind the man and he was taken away. Uh... <laughs> what will happen to the man who was protesting you? Oh, which man? That one in the crowd? Don't worry about the details. He must have been a troubled fellow. Let's follow on the event. Oh, boy. I need this trade deal. I can't get no trade deal. Uh... He totally wasn't going to pay the guy. He only paid him because I tried to. I'm playing into his hands, Wargiven? I mean, I need the trade deal, so... I will smoke with him. Not much in particular. Like any other country, they have their needs and their own agenda. They can go to hell. 
Exactly. To hell with Rumborg. I like you already, Anton. I assure you their time will come. Are you planning something? No, not yet. For now, I have something else in mind. What is it? Look, Bloods and their so-called BFF are causing problems for me in this region. I know that they're also a problem for you as well. I will not allow these traitors to exist in my borders, so I will hit them with the might of Valen. These terrorists need to be destroyed. I call it Operation Bear Trap. What do you want from me? Here's the deal. I'll give you the best trade deal in the region. You'll give me your assistance in crushing the terrorists on the, both of our borders. Uh, I need specifics. Sure. My spies have infiltrated BFF cells and they found caches of KA-74s. We traced them back to Rumburg. This alone justifies my retaliation to protect my country. Worst of all, we also found a similar shipment going to Swordland. Yes, Anton. You see, this was not just Valen's problem. Let's take a step back about all of this when we get in return. I propose you a no-tariff agreement, co-investment projects, and oil. In return, you will assist me in destroying the terrorists in my country. What kind of support do you need from me? Can't Valen handle it by itself? We can, but these vermin are good at hiding. What I want from you in return for all the money and the resources is a joint operation in between our armies against the BFF. Um. Um. This. He's giving you quite a good deal. Yeah, because I'm going to be involved in freaking war crimes. Victor suddenly developed an accent? <laughs> oh, no. Maybe I can minimize my participation in this. You're a tough one, Anton. Normally, I wouldn't offer anything else, but uh, I like you. Here's my final offer. When the operation starts with, with you or without you, there will be stragglers trying to cross into Swordland. We just want you to support the operation even if you do not join. Stop the terrorists from fleeing into your country and you will have your deal. Simple, isn't it? So, what do you think? The Swordland Valen Alliance will be supreme. So flattering him was worth it. <laughs> Take this deal. Uh, I hate this. This runs against everything that I want to do. Abetting war crimes isn't that big a deal. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Tonight, we will drink, yeah? He clapped his hands again. Drinks, dancers, and music. Don't spoil anything, Tom and Korea. <laughs> You're already a puppet to the oligarchs. Quit your whining. I've been inconsistent in my support of the oligarchs. This might be brought up when you end up in The Hague. I will not end up in The Hague. The Hague has no jurisdiction over me. Swordland ratified new trade agreement with Valen. Von Horten is playing with fire. Yesterday, Chancellor of Vagsland Hegel delivered a press conference in Heilem about the escalating tensions in Hegelsland. During the press release, he said, Agnolia's unlawful occupation of the island will not stop. I don't know what accent this is. It keeps changing. From doing whatever it takes to protect our people living in Hegelsland. He heavily criticized and condemned Prime Minister Van Horten, saying we are dealing with an illegal occupation force, which does not refrain from entering our territorial vatos. V uh, without asking our permission. Van Horten is playing with fire, and he's not careful he might get burned. Everybody wants to go to war with everyone, apparently. Mm -hmm. 
Speech of the President on the Reforms. I came to the Grand National Assembly of Swordland to deliver a speech regarding the new constitution and ask for the support of the assembly before the upcoming vote. I walked quickly through the corridors, giving my greetings to people on my way toward the parliamentary hall. When I entered the hall, the assembly was in complete chaos, with shouting and cursing between the parties. There was a heavy argument about a proposal made by an MP from NFP. I took my seat inside the special area, reserved for the ministers. Gloria was shouting from her seat at the center of the hall as she hit the gavel three times, with each strike heavier than the one before. Order! Order! I saw Kessero Kildner standing up from his seat and shouting toward the members of the PFJP. Mr. Kibner, calm yourself. Show respect to the procedures of this assembly. Despite her efforts, the argument continued for a couple of minutes before everybody took back their seats and finally went quiet. Mr. Kibner, next time when I tell you to do so, either take your seat or leave the hall so we can proceed with the procedures of this assembly and continue our duties. Some MPs from the NFP side shouted back at her in protest. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, if you allow me to continue. We have the president here with us today. He is asked to give an important announcement. The assembly fell silent. You can tell from the music, this is going to be an important moment for the game. An important moment for decisions. You have the floor, Mr. President. I walked to the stand as loud clapping started in the USP side. Honorable members of the Assembly of Swordland, I am here today to raise the important questions regarding our outdated constitution. So, what am I going to do here, guys? Don't be indecisive. I'm asking you guys. Chat. I don't know where to start with this. I could start with the Supreme Court is too much power, but that probably is going to piss off the old guard. Our election thresholds have harmed democracy more than anything. Eh, I've been indecisive on that. I feel like three kind of fits what I'm trying to do, but four could also work if I want to blame someone. But I'm going to go with three. Our constitution does not adequately define or respect the separation of powers and balance between the branches. In order to strengthen our democracy, we must be brave enough to point out the faults of our constitution. Therefore, we propose changes to the constitution to prepare Swordland for a more democratic era. Applauses came from USP and PFJP seats. We will break the Supreme Court's authority over constitutional changes. We will rebalance the branches of the government to ensure a more democratic process. Unity, change, or peace? Yikes. The conservatives won't like change. The radicals won't like peace. Maybe unity? It is more important than ever that we stand united as a nation in these changing times. I call for everybody to be part of the change our people have been calling for. We all want to make Swordland better, don't we? Let us embrace democracy and unite under the banner of our people, and surely Swordland will be great again. We will make Swordland great again. Let us embrace the future. Probably, I feel like two. One is way too old guardsy for, like, talking about, like, amending the Constitution. Let us embrace the future. Loud noises came from USP and NFP seats. I took a breath and continued. Ladies and gent- I don't know if those are good loud noises or bad.
Ladies and gentlemen of the assembly, we must set aside our differences. Be part of a new era for Swordland. Join us and vote for our proposal. Let us write the future together. I demand your vote, Pasco. Well, it's a little late for that. Finish with a poem. There is destiny above destiny. There is God beyond existence or non-existence. There is my country beyond everything. My beloved? Oh, God, I should not have gone with the poem route. Always so vague, Red Rover. There are songs to be sung in affection of our victories. There is spring that blossoms out of the grave of our fallen. There is spring that blossoms out of the graves of our fallen. Do not dare to surrender. There is a victory that grows with defeat. Well, that's not very unifying. Fear not, when the darkness falls, there is an artist painting the sun. Beyond the next morning, there is victory waiting to be won. The assembly roared with all kinds of different reactions. Some applauses came from the PFJP and USP seats. Most of the others started to make loud noises again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mrs. Speaker, I would like to thank Mr. President for his speech. We, the People's Freedom and Justice Party, stand in agreement with the need for a more democratic constitution. I would like to thank the ladies and gentlemen of the United Sorland Party for their more open attitude compared to past years. As long as Mr. President's words prove not to just be words, we will be behind this much-needed movement for change. We welcome this attempt. I ask Mr. President to share the final contents of these proposals as soon as possible. Thank you, Mrs. Speaker. The President must have lost his mind to cooperate with the likes of you, Mr. Richter. You and the PFJP are nothing but puppets of Western interests. Order! Madam Speaker, I know you are in agreement with me as well. Don't stand idly while these administrations is making deals with snakes and undermine the integrity of sort. Order, Mr. Keebler, how many times do I need to say you are speaking out of... I demand to speak. Very well, Mr. Keebler. Go ahead. Mr. President, the nationalist movement does not agree with your priorities, nor the way you are trying to implement them. The National Front Party will not stand with you on your new constitution. Let it be known that the NFP concerns are not included in the so-called democratic reforms. Thus, Mr. President has no right to claim them as such. We will stand our ground against any attempt to bring down our established political culture and national values. Thank you. Ask to speak again. Yes, Mr. President. Oh, God. I made a mistake. I have to make more decisions. <sighs> hmm, civil war is coming. Mr. Richter. We'd like to have cooperation between our parties. I expect your support, Mr. Richter. We can do much together. Thank you for your support. We are looking forward to, to work with the PFJP. I welcome your positive attitude. Mr. Kliebler, it is you who shouldn't use the word democratic when you want a more centralized government. We are not specifically cooperating with someone, but with everyone. We ask that you also join us. T 
<laughs> you wonder how my ultimate general skills will translate into the next civil war that's coming? I'm saddened to hear about your opposition's stance. Do not stand against change. Be part of it, Mr. Keeper. We can do much more together. I expect your support in the upcoming vote. Thank you, Mrs. Speaker. I don't think that one went very well. <laughs> I don't think that one went very well at all. It sounded like I had a few positive cheers from both sides of two different parties and a lot of hostility. Good work, Lucian. We're at 121. We need to get to 150. Continue. Wealth of nations. I don't think it was disastrous, Pascal, but I don't think it was good either. Titan to the max. Thank you very much for the follow a couple of minutes ago. You didn't know we're playing EU4 now? I don't know that I'd go quite that far. So Valen, who we signed that agreement with to do that secret operation, their dictatorship is over here. Uh, what's going on in Angolia? Van Horten wins elections. General elections had in Angolia this week have resulted in the victory of Nutris Democra nu Nurist Democratic Union of Angolia for the second time with its leader, Martin Van Horten, continuing his duties as prime minister. Martin Van Horten. Read the report from Holsort. Privatization plan proposal. The Ministry of Health has finished a privatization proposal plan in order to increase the resources of the health system to increase the quality of service through small-scale market competition. Additionally, the Ministry's report highlighted the weakness of Sordland when, uh, has, when it comes to potential e an epidemic. They re really keep harping on this epidemic. I, I'm kind of thinking it might be coming. The Ministry of Justice has, revu has reviewed the Erson v. Swordland case and put forward its concurrent opinion before sending the dispute to the Supreme Court. The Vice Minister of Justice came forward agreeing with the case of Isfil Erson and pointed out that a majority court dissent would do disservice to the legal precedent of future constitutional rights cases. The case is now in the hands of the Supreme Court. General staffs convened at the Ministry of Defense today to assess the security conditions of Swordland. More than 20 high-ranking officers were in attendance, discussed several war plans, the internal stability of the nation, and the overall state of the armed forces. Requested meeting of Yosef Lankia, Defense Minister. I never liked this building. It always made me feel like I was standing under the concrete foot of a giant getting ready to crush me. It made me feel small, and I never quite got used to the feeling, even after many years. We must plan for an internal insurgency. Where's Velkin? He usually partakes in all military matters. This must be something serious since you invited me here. It's important that you don't get misinformed on this matter. Valken has another agenda. The situation with Rumberg is getting worse, and if it wasn't for our investments in the military, it would be even more concerned. Our efforts to restructure the military should prove beneficial in a potential conflict. We would never be able to match the force of Rumberg on equal terms, therefore our switch to the military to a smaller, well-equipped, and autonomously led combat units will provide... Autonomously? Um... Ooh. 
So we could let people in, and if we let them in, that kind of violates our trade deal with Valen, right? That is an option, I think. Because fuck the dictator, right? You don't want me to let a single person in, Pascobar. True. No, we're talking about Valen. So he's talking about the... I can't... Can I get out of here? So the border he's talking about is over here, Valen, where the operation's going to be occurring. One's kind of neutral. The mandatory conscription laws become a matter of discussion, and we need to strike a decision where to keep or remove it. The facts are that the conscription gives us a large reservist pool that can cover our front line, but these troops lack morale and quality to be offensive elements. It's the last step to switch to a modern professional armed forces. Our restructuring is hindered by 100,000 cadets extending our logistics, slowing command structure, and reducing the combat effectiveness of our experienced units. Let's wait for Valken before making a decision. I want to hear his viewpoint. A strong knock on the door was heard, and the chief of the armed forces, Valken Kruger, walked in quickly with a frown. What is the meaning of this, Yosef? Why haven't I been invited? What is going on here? You are overstepping and interrupting a personal meeting between me and the president. Valken has a point. The military needs to be on the same page on any changes. Thank you, Mr. President. We are talking about the national defense, which must be consulted among my st all my staff. To clarify, we would have brought the subject up with the general staff and you. The matter is rather simple from my point of view. Our forces have gone, have gone large structural changes, changing the operational capabilities and tactics. However, at the end of the day, Rumberg is a larger army, air force, and navy. Hmm. Agreed, there is a place for reservists. This is hard, Red Rover. This is very hard, basketball. Yeah, I mean, we need conscription. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Air Force. It doesn't matter how good or big our army is. If we get hit from above, it's going to massively... Like, we're already under strength. One way that we can, we can maintain our strength or maintain our posture against them is a modernized Air Force. If the soldiers get bombed from above, a lot of that modernization goes away. The Air Force can't take Land Lake, but I'm uh, imagining more of a defensive war. 
and it can definitely interdict offensive strikes against me. Okay. Women's Rights March. A group of demonstrators led by representative from Sorters League of Women's marched in Anarikia, calling for gender equality. Okay, well, that's good, because I'm already on, on board with that. I don't see any other events around here. Briefing on the current economic situation. Oh my god, my economy tanked! What happened? The team gathered in Holsord at the Ministry of the Economy to conduct an economy overview meeting to go over the current situation. The building was constructed in 1892 by Hernan Valt, one of, the, one of the, if not the most famous, architect in Swordland. The building looked simple and elegant, with a few of its signature domes spread, it, spread over the roof. Walking through the large bronze doors at the entrance, I was led by two assistants upstairs into a meeting room. Everyone stood up as I entered the room, buttoning their suit jackets. Welcome, Mr. President. Please take your seats. As you know, today we go over our economic status. Let's begin without any further ado. How are we doing in terms of infrastructure? The first months had positive indicators, but the delay of infrastructure project reversed economic gains. Why couldn't we solve the H3 construction issues? The Nationalist Business Council isn't happy with the lack of tangible economic improvements at all. Our trade deal with Valen has increased our imports and exports by 60% in one month, which is a considerably good number. Regardless, the numbers are clear. I must say, it can't get I can't get behind a trade deal with Valen, especially when it involves military cooperation. I feel like we've made a contract with the devil. That's excellent news. To help with the recession, there's a few possibilities I want to outline. We have a surplus, but regardless, if we have to go into debt, we need to increase our economic development. I've prepared a few project proposals. There's two main distinctions in between the projects. It's either about continuing our infrastructure improvements or investing in increasing production. If we continue our infrastructure, that would lift us to advanced country levels. However, industrial production suffered and also needs a boost to return to pre-recession levels. There's, of course, the option to not take any risks related to our budget. The plans for these projects will be finalized soon. For now, I can provide preliminary information. Which one would you like to hear first? Infrastructure. The Benif International Airport and one is the Morna Port. Benif is growing at a rapid pace and would benefit highly from International Airport. Much more money to be made there too. The Morna Port will boost trade, improve the flow of goods toward Holsord because the Conrite Port is too small in capacity and extension is blocked by the Navy headquarters. Would a more significant city with a port and the advanced logistical connection to Holsord be better utilized?
I have a couple related economy questions. How strong is our currency? Okay. What is going on here? So Okay. So perhaps it dropped. Oh my God, the economy dropped from two to one? Why? Polio? Oh shit. Uh, everything's going wrong. It's all falling apart. I should not have gone with Taurus, huh? Investment and mega project. There's several investment projects outlined which we could start. Uh, let's do the industrial zone. Go with uh, economics. Ooh, that costs a lot of money. It costs two. Yikes. Didn't realize I wasn't paying attention to that. Budget allocation of healthcare. I don't have any budget left. I mean, I guess I could go to debt, too. Don't go past negative nine. Are you speaking from experience over there? Con conquering, conquer, conquer us. Nice name, by the way. I need to keep privatization on hold right now. Our party chair has already said that she doesn't want me to privatize more.
Okay. A landmark court filing has been appealed to the Court of Appeals today and is under review by Minister of Justice. The lawyer and Bluetish civil rights activist Isvel Erison sued the Dari municipality led by Felix Braun for the infringement of the constitutional rights of equality before the law. The case, uh, the case questions the separate legal treatment of Bluetish and Dyer and, by extension, the whole of Bergia. Uh, what happened in Valen? Chief of the Armed Forces Valken Kruger reported that the Vesic Armed Forces are moving north uh, toward the town of Vermin. On the other way, many Bludish villages were assaulted, and the initial reports indicate a high death toll. As they're approaching and closer to the border, Vesic Army's mo movement will be observed closely. Many displaced refugees from the battles have been seen moving toward the Swordish border. They've been turned and force or around forcefully to ensure the complete defense of the border. Yeah, oh, we're supporting war crimes and genocide. Oh. Burr goes the money printer. Talks with Franz Richter on the upcoming vote. It's good to have you here, Mr. Richter. Likewise, it's nice to be here. I have to say I'm surprised by the proposal you've been preparing for the new constitution, but I really do not understand your reasoning behind some of the changes here. I thought we were on the same page. Don't get me wrong, I like the draft as I've start stated earlier during the reform committees. I'm just honestly surprised by your decision to decrease the electoral threshold. We were nearly sure that you would not listen to the reformist demands. How does the USP feel about that, Mr. President? Is this political suicide, or did you actually manage to unite the party under this? The USP is in agreement. It's up to you to support it now. Mrs. Tory didn't seem to be very enthusiastic about the new constitution. Are you sure you have the votes needed? I believe that Chief Justice has her ear, and the old guards are doing their best for you to fa fail the vote. Are you aware that the old guard has been reaching out to even the members of my party? I hope you're doing something to contain this mess. Who would guess? Of course they are, but we shouldn't worry. My hands are tied. We just need to focus on the upcoming vote. But even if we pass the first vote, how are you going to persuade the judges to vote for this? They surely will consider this proposal as anti-soul. I'm not going to just bribe them outright. We have a few connections inside. I'm going to handle that. Oh. Is Mrs. Emmerns one of them? Not yet, but we're working on that. Of course, we're in this together. That's great to hear. I hope I can rely on you. The upcoming vote, we expect your party's full support. I'm happy to cooperate with you, Mr. Richter. Was there anything else? No, Mr. Richter, it was nice talking to you. I'm looking forward to... I don't want to just, like, offend him and accuse him of going to other countries. I need his support on the damn election. Or vote. Even though we know that he might be traveling to some off-map capitalistic countries and whatever.
Yes, SC Underhaul Construction and Taurus companies have put forward their bids in the hopes of winning the government contract to a new ambitious investment project. Which company should we pick to lead the project? Underhill, I guess. They're the, you know, we did Taurus for the roadways, so I guess we'll do Underhill for this other thing. Not going to go state-owned. Now we're growing old and bitter. Let's not get sidetracked. It comes with a welcome surprise in Swordish politics to see a president uphold their promise regarding education. I'm making sure that the additional funds are being used in the best way possible in order to resolve structural issues. Speaking of, the state having had to rely on privatization funds is a disgrace. We're letting private interests meddle in the most essential services learning. New private schools are increasing the disparity of services and education. Lower income households who can't afford the private schools in their district might need to send their student schools to a public school. I thought it was a minor thing. You played a huge part in this too, Sierra. Our ministry has prepared the necessary, the necessary framework regarding how to spend our increased education budget. I've outlined three potential options. We can build new rural schools, improve the standard of existing ones, or increase salaries for all education workers. We have the capacity to implement only one of these options. The issue is very critical as we're losing many young people to ignorance and illiteracy. Swordland's rural population is full of untapped potential. Look at how United Cantana is pushing its ar past Arcasia in education and research. It's because of their, most, their rural population has access to schools. The job itself should be held in higher regard and compensated accordingly. These are people who have chosen to dedicate themselves to betterment of others, to helping to raise the next generation. We ought to give them more of what they deserve. What does improving... Uh, I thought I already said that. Oh, that's the existing schools, right? No way we picked Taurus. It kind of makes me wonder, though, Red Rover, if Taurus would have been the right choice for number two, but the wrong choice for number one. More schools! All right. What do we still have going for us? We're still in Chapter 2, huh? Uh, I'll figure that out. So, newspapers... More crisis on the Hedgeland Island. I'm personally wealthy, but the economy is not doing so well. We're at one tick. The highway needs to finish, goddammit. It's still not making any progress. Conquering, uh, conquer, conquer us? I guess, yeah, but I had also promised to privatize more, so maybe I should have gone with the public company. I don't know. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode of Suzerain. Uh, this was an interesting one, uh, political theater with my wife uh, leading 
uh, a massive speech that I think was very good for her and very good for women uh, in Suzerain uh, or, or so, uh, Swordland. But we will see how good it is for yours truly's uh, political career. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. These episodes are a little bit longer, um, but it's kind of done that way deliberately. I, I, this isn't the kind of series I, I think we're going to turn into like an 80-episode series, uh, like Strategic Command. Um, the audience is a little bit smaller, and uh, the action is a little bit slower. Uh, I also don't think the game is quite as long. So I've been deliberately making these episodes a little bit longer, but I hope you guys are enjoying. Leave your thoughts down below. Let me know if this is something you're liking or if you'd like me to chop these up to be smaller or if you'd like to stop seeing this game. But that's going to do it for today. Hope, hope you guys enjoyed, and this is the Historical Gamer saying I'm out.